I've been marking a lot this weekend, and I think it's time we had a quick talk about how to write a good or better essay. When you teach grade 11 essays, you have an expectation that what you're going to get will be good, but not great all the time. You'll get the odd great essay, but you'll get mostly okay essays. And I wanted to give a few tips to people looking to improve. If you got a C plus and you think you can get a B, if you've got a B and you think you can get an A, but you're just trying to figure out like what is it that's expected of you to get that higher mark, the first thing you've got to do is take a side on some sort of issue. We're going to look at Iron Man and Batman. If I wanted to do a bad essay, I could talk about how Batman and Iron Man are similar. And I'm just going to sit there and I'm going to talk about how they're both millionaires, that they're both orphans, they both solve the world's problems using technology. That would be the basis of a, probably a C-plus kind of essay if all I ever did was talk about the ways in which Batman and Iron Man are similar. But if I wanted to get a really good essay, that's when I, it's time to start taking some sort of stance. Like, the obvious stance would be that Batman is better than Iron Man. You can totally argue with me, and that's great, but I will provide solid evidence to support my argument, and then I will win the, the essay mark. You could get an A on your essay if you wrote about how Iron Man is better, and you provided solid, well-researched examples to support that, and, and we could both get A's on our essays. You have to, have to, have to take a stance on some sort of issue. You can't just talk about how these two things are similar or these two things are different. That's boring and no one cares. And and I really, I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but it's just not good enough. You've got to like provide something that's interesting. So let's start doing this. Let's let's play the game. So Batman is obviously better than Iron Man. Like there's no question. And if you like Iron Man, it's because all you've ever watched are the movies of Batman and Iron Man and, and you know, uh, maybe you could make a case that the Batman movies are not as good as the Iron Man movies. Batman is better than Iron Man because Batman has cooler villains. Iron Man's villains are all like teched out and it's kind of the same thing over and over and over again. It doesn't ever get super, super interesting when it comes to Iron Man, except when Iron Man is fighting Captain America or fighting the Hulk, then suddenly he's kind of an interesting character. Whereas Batman despite the fact that occasionally he has to fight other heroes, and, and those are some cool, interesting moments, and, you know, the whole idea that Batman can defeat Superman because he always has a backup plan is, is really interesting, but Batman is super compelling because he has this awesome cast of villains. You get a totally different kind of story when Batman faces off with the Joker than when Batman faces off with Two-Face than when Batman faces off with Poison Ivy. It's always different, it's always interesting, it's complex, and, and it's unique. The other thing is that Batman, Batman's vulnerable. Maybe he's got a Kevlar vest, and then he's got spandex, and that's about it. He has to get down, he has to get dirty, and he gets the crap beaten out of him. Whereas with Iron Man, here's a guy in basically an indestructible suit. It's going to take a whole lot to do a dent to him, and so that makes him less vulnerable, a little bit less interesting. Uh, fact number three that makes Iron Man kind of a less interesting character than Batman is Iron Man's kind of a jerk. I think a lot of good people have drinking problems, and that's not necessarily, you know, the sign of a bad person. However, it's just not quite as interesting as Batman, who whose own personal identity, you know, the, the identity of Bruce Wayne, that part of Batman is the facade. That's the mask. And like the real character is Batman. He he would be Batman every minute of every day if he could. Whereas Tony Stark is Tony Stark and you know he only pops on the costume when he needs to go and fight some crime. The other thing about Iron Man that's perhaps why he's not quite as good as Batman is that Iron Man isn't necessarily essential to anything. There are tons and tons of really cool characters who will keep things going if Iron Man just like retires for a while or if he gets sick or whatever. Like you can still have an Avengers without Iron Man and they're not even gonna like call him up to ask for some help sometime. There is no DC universe without Batman. If Batman quit or retired, there would have to be someone who stepped in there to fill that kind of role. Batman cements the Justice League in a, in a fascinating way. And and even if there isn't a Batman on the Justice League at a particular time, uh, the entire Justice League is running with Bruce Wayne money. 
I suppose you could make the argument that the Avengers, you know, they operate out of Stark Tower or they're funded through Tony Stark or, or all that other kind of stuff. But the thing is, like, there are other characters who can fulfill the role of Iron Man. Uh, plenty of time. Uh, Hank Pym, also known as the, the original Ant-Man or Giant-Man, he sort of fulfills the role of the smart science-y guy. Um, if they need help, they can always call Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. They don't need Tony Stark. If they need money, there's always... Captain America, he seems to have like a, a hidden cache of like crazy Nazi money somehow. Of course, the Avengers runs as a team when Iron Man's away. There's a, there's different leaders. Uh, sometimes it's a Hawkeye. Sometimes it's Captain America. Sometimes it's Spider Man or Luke Cage or, or whatever else. Like when the Avengers fall apart, ninety percent of the time it's Tony Stark's fault. The point I'm trying to make is that this is more interesting than saying like, hey, you know, Iron Man is like Batman. That's boring. That's You could do that in a sentence. Three sentences maximum. Like, that's not a multi-paragraph essay. You could try that with, with any number of things. Like, take a minute to, like, have a debate with a friend about their favorite color and why they like their favorite color, and then explain why you like your favorite color more than you like that favorite color. Like, there's there's room for some opinion, there's room for some argument, there's room for some discussion. Whereas if you say brown is as good as red, great. There. Done. Game over. There's nothing else to say. Yeah, you're right. Brown is as good as red. Like if we're if we're like looking in the grand scheme of the universe, yes, they are equally good. But maybe maybe you can present to me something new, something interesting that I've never heard before about the color brown and why brown is better than red. And and maybe you'll win me over. Maybe I will stop wearing my red hoodie all the time and I will get a brown hoodie and we will become brown hoodie people. This is the skill that we are trying to get you to develop when we ask you to write an essay. We're trying to get you to build your arguing skills. We're trying to help you to, to you know, support your arguments with evidence and to, to present facts because that's, that's what you're going to have to do out there in the world. And you need to learn this because out there in the world there are lots of people who are presenting all kinds of arguments without good evidence, without good arguing skills. And you need to be able to kind of like work with those people and and either dismiss what they have to say or think about what they have to say or reason through what they have to say and think.